Today we're breaking down what Oda might be plotting with Lode Star Island, because this place is the final point of all routes on the log pose, and for a very long time we all thought that this was supposed to be the final island raftal, or what we now call Laugh Tale, because Crocus said as much, and since he sailed with Roger, he should have been a pretty solid source of information on this. But instead, we later learned from Inurashi that this is actually where pirates are meant to learn about the Poneglyphs, and who made them, and the fact you need all four road poneglyphs to find the true final island, which of course is Laugh Tale. And since Luffy lucked out and got this information early from Inurashi, it then kind of begs the question if the Straw Hats even need to stop there at all at this point. The island sort of feels unnecessary now, like it's the odd one out, especially compared to places like Elbath, Laugh Tale, or wherever the final war happens. But despite all of that, I think Crocus and Oda both have a solid reason for us to still go there, because just as Inurashi told Nami, Crocus knows even more than he he does. He wouldn't lie about where to go unless he disliked them, which after helping Laboon and seeing Luffy's straw hat, I would have to imagine he likes them quite a bit. So while I think it's easy to view Crocus's comment about Raftal being at the end of the Grand Line as maybe a fragment of early One Piece that Oda changed his mind on, or just Crocus trying not to spill all the beans right at the start of the journey, I think we need to take it a little bit more seriously. Not that Laugh Tale is actually there or anything, which that would be kind of crazy, but Inurashi telling us that we're on the right path and that we should continue on our way is a foreshadow in and of itself that going to Lodestar will still serve some kind of purpose in the future of the story, even beyond the information they would have normally learned there. But what exactly could that purpose be? Well, there's basically two parts to this answer, and that's also how I'm going to split up the video. So first, we'll discuss the future of the island, like why this place is still probably necessary for the Straw Hats and their dreams going forward. And then after that, we're going to talk about the past of the island like what Roger actually found there, and how this could tie into both O'Hara's translation of the Poneglyphs and what Rox D. Zebek was up to. Because even if Oda can write in any number of simple reasons for us to land there, like not having the final road Poneglyph so we still follow the log pose, or even if we do find it, Luffy may still want to land there for adventure's sake, we will still need a bigger plot relevant reason for that arc to even occur, right? I mean, this is arguably the second most important island for pirates. Pirates. For most, it's the one necessary stop before even having a chance of finding the One Piece. So Oda's gonna need to cook up something serious while we're here, which isn't always that easy to do, and that's where Cook Unity comes in, the sponsor for today's video. Cook Unity is the first chef to you meal delivery service that's made up of over 70 chefs who believe that great food should be for everyone. Each week, award-winning chefs craft hundreds of globally inspired meals, from vegetarian to paleo and everything in between, where the meals are then made in regional micro kitchens and shipped to you. And I really appreciated the packaging because it came in an insulated box that kept the meals fresh even in this recent heat wave. Yet they weren't frozen from the cooling gel they included either. The menu also rotates every week so there's always something new to try. And they cook with real ingredients, nothing artificial. And the subscription is super flexible, meaning that you can pause, skip weeks, or cancel at any time. Cook Unity chefs also offer up a wide range of meals with over seven different dietary preference filters including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. So today I'm going to be eating some lasagna by Fabio Viviani, or I guess technically his grandma since it's her recipe, which was made in Chicago. And this seriously tastes like I got it from a restaurant. There's just so much cheese, which you will not hear me complain about, and the sauce tastes so much better than one you'd get from the store or something. So Fabio and his grandma definitely know what they're doing. And I also tried the barbecue chicken burrito bowl by Ruben Garcia, which the chicken was just phenomenal. And I was also a big fan of the Korean flank steak rice bowl by Esther Choi. You can really taste the depth of flavor in each one of these, and I also love how easy it is to track your macros and stick to your diet goals. So if you're ready to take your meal game to the next level, go to cookunity.com DAX50 or click the link in the description below and use my code DAX50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself. Thanks again to Cook Unity for sponsoring, but let's get back to the video. So I think the most relevant reason why we need to go to Lodestar, kind of regardless of whether we have the final road poneglyph or not, is simply that we're gonna need help getting over the red line and back down Reverse Mountain. And I think Crocus knew about that and thus why he told us to go here. Because something or someone is probably waiting here to help us do that. Because remember, you can only access Reverse Mountain via one of the four blues. The new world just kinda dead ends right into the red line unless you cross the Calm Belts. Which, are the Straw Hats strong enough at this point to make it across the Calm Belt alone? Maybe, or probably, 
especially if they have Shirahoshi with them somehow, since the Sea Kings are one of the biggest threats there. But even if they could fend those off, there's the entire issue of actually traveling over it since there's no wind. That's why it's called the Calm Belt in the first place. Now, Frankie did build some mechanisms in the Sunny that might help with this, including the Rabbit Propeller, but it would probably take a lot of cola to get all the way across, which they may or may not have. And you know, there's been a few arcs now where we escape by using a coup de burst, so if we escape Elbaf using a coup de burst, we may arrive at Lodestar very low on cola anyway. So I think solving this whole red line conundrum is exactly what Lodestar is for. And that goes double if we assume that Laugh is going to be outside of the New World. Because obviously we need to go down Reverse Mountain again to at least see Laboon, but if Laugh is also on that side of things, there's kind of two reasons why we have to figure this out, right? But now the question is, who or what could be at Lodestar that would help us accomplish this? Well, I think that answer is none other than Scopper Gabon, the mystery man who everyone has been waiting to see in action at some point, and I know I'm not the first one to ever bring up the idea that he's waiting at Lodestar, but I do think it makes so much sense because we have already met past Roger Pirates at the start and midway points of the Grand Line as it is. And it's not just about where they were each placed, but how they each helped us along our journey. I mean, we had Crocus at the very beginning, who explained how we traverse over the Grand Line via log poses. Then Rayleigh was at Saba Odi and helped the crew go under the Red Line to continue the journey via bubble coating. So having Scopper at Lodestar to help us go over the Red Line, kind of the reverse of what Rayleigh did, and back down to Crocus, who told us to go here originally, would complete that trifecta almost too perfectly. All three would be at the most crucial points needed to make sure pirates can get where they need to be, probably since they knew there was a certain someone coming in the future to try and save the world from this flood or whatever. And I mean, we even saw Rayleigh swim across the Calm Belt before and take out a Sea King while doing it. And with Scopper being the other wing of Roger, maybe Scopper can do something similar and just kind of escort our ship over the Calm Belt so we can go up Reverse Mountain the old-fashioned way. Or maybe my favorite option here is that it could all tie back to Roger's egg, the one that he had on his ship that we never really learned a lot about, and we don't know where it went since the Roger Pirates disbanded. And with Scopper being one of the higher-ranking pirates in that crew, and the one that we haven't seen recently, it wouldn't be much of a shocker if he was in charge of that egg, I think. And there's also been a lot of theories on top of that, for me included, about why that egg could be tied to the ancient weapon Uranus, the god of the sky. And if that's true, meaning that whatever was in that egg can probably fly, then maybe that thing is what flies us over the red line instead. This gives us several different options for how Scopper might be able to help us go where we need to go. And in addition to all of this, I think this is also going to be where Nami and Robin work together to find Laugh Tail on a map using the four road poneglyphs. Because remember, back in Zo, Robin even showed Nami a translation of one road poneglyph, where Nami realized she could then use it to identify a location. And supposedly, we can then intersect the four locations of all four road poneglyphs and find Laugh Tail. And if you go back to Roger's flashback, we saw that even after they had all four of them, his crew took some time to figure out where it was while they were in a random port city that hasn't yet been revealed in the story. And part of me wonders if that island was Lodestar, meaning that we could parallel Roger pretty closely here by also figuring out where it is while we're there. And this would give Nami some shine that she really needs, I think. This might be quote-unquote her arc, like Whole Cake was Sanji's arc, and people thought Wano would be Zoro's arc, although that wasn't quite as cut and dry, and Elbaf could very well be Usopp's arc, etc. And I really do think that this makes a lot of sense for Nami, because her navigation ability is on display pretty commonly, whether it's talking about the log pose or the weather patterns or whatnot, but her overarching dream is to complete a map of the world, and we really don't see her working on maps very often. Part of me wonders if this is just due to the fact she already made a lot of maps before for Arlong, and maybe with the ones she's found since then at shops and whatnot, she probably has most of the world's islands already mapped out in some way, shape, or form. But the one she's obviously missing, no matter what, is the true final island, being Laugh Tail. And if she can figure out where that is while being on the Log Pose's final island in Lodestar, that would just be such a W for her, I feel like. And it would give us a really good chance to get up to speed on where Nami is at on her dream. And I think another reason why Lodestar is the perfect place is because that word actually means a star that is used to guide the course of a ship, especially the Pole Star. And you know, since Nami's been the one to guide our ship this entire time, it would make sense that she would get shined during this arc. But in addition to that, I also think that the definition of Lodestar hints to us that Lodestar may be a parallel to Logtown, 
Town, because Logtown is on the Pole Star Islands. Also, both of these places will likely be our final stop before Reverse Mountain. It's just, you know, each are on different sides of the red line. And I also wonder if Luffy might have like another near-death moment like he did with Buggy on the execution stand during Logtown. Or maybe we'll meet an old man who says Luffy reminds him of Roger. Kind of like that anime-only scene in the Bard. And since we had the barrel scene right after Logtown, which sort of cemented each of the Straw Hats dreams, I bet you that Lodestar will also be where we get a lot of updates on those dreams, and maybe even where some of them can get completed. I mean, I already mentioned Nami and her maps, but think about Brooke. His dream will be completed once we actually make it down Reverse Mountain, which should be right after this arc ends. And if this is where we determine where Laugh Tale is, then Luffy's first dream will be right on the horizon as well. And this will come after Elbaf, so Usopp may already be a brave warrior of the sea at this point. I also strongly believe that we're going to fight the Cross Guild during Elbaf, which could mean that Zoro already fought Mihawk and became the world's strongest swordsman. And even if he didn't, that fight couldn't be too far away from Lodestar since we'd be so close to the end of the story. Maybe we'll see Sanji start thinking that the All Blue will appear once the world floods since, you know, all the oceans would kind of merge. So there's a chance that his dream could be near fruition as well. And Frankie's kind of gets completed once Luffy completes his, assuming they go there on the sunny, which basically just leaves Jinbei, Chopper, and potentially Vivi as the ones who may be a bit harder to explain in my estimation, although I'm sure Oda could figure something out. But don't think I forgot about Robin either. I saved her for last because I think Lodestar will heavily focus on her, maybe even more so than Nami. Because this is where pirate casuals learn about the Poneglyphs in the first place. The Load and Lodestar is the same word as Road and Road Poneglyphs. It's just that L and R thing. So what better place for Robin to show out than here? Now, the only caveat with this is that Robin probably knows most of the information here already because we learned it at Zoe. So Oda's gonna have to spice it up in some way, shape, or form to make this hit as hard as it should. And this is where the past of this island comes into play, specifically with Roger and potentially Rox D. Zebek. Because one of the most important questions with Lodestar Island for me is what exactly was it that the Roger pirates found on that island which told them all of this crucial information? Because the first answer that pops into your head is probably just a Poneglyph, since you know that's usually what conveys this sort of important information. But Roger had no way of reading the Poneglyphs until he got Odin 13 years later. So it seems like this island had to have something else, something that almost almost anyone could read or hear and understand. I mean, sure, Roger could get a general vibe from the Poneglyphs by using the voice of all things, but it was very vague. That's why he needed to go get Odin in the first place. And the information that they learned here at Lodestar just seems so specific. So I think it had to be something else. Like, is there something on this island that's instead written in the vernacular that explains all this? Or is there maybe a tone dial where someone is vocally explaining it? Or perhaps there's a long lineage of people who have been passing down this information information, sort of like we've had at Fishman Island in Wano with the ancient weapons? Or is there maybe a memory bubble there, like the one that Kuma left behind, which people can then experience this information that they need to learn? Well, this question is sort of what led me down a giant rabbit hole that we're tunneling through today, and surprisingly it led me right over to God Valley, because that incident occurred just one year after Roger landed at Lodestar. And in chapter 1096, we see Roger yell out to Rox and say, do you have any idea? idea how I felt this past year. Oda seems to be hinting at an altercation of sorts between the two regarding that island, something that Roger holds resentment or ill will toward. It could just be that they fought and maybe Roger lost in his own kind of Saba Odi moment or something since Rox was one of, if not the, top dog back then. But I think it probably goes even deeper than that, like something tied to the lore that they learned there, tying back to my original question of what mechanism is used to explain the road Pony situation to these pirates. Scopper also mentioned no using the captain card to call dibs this time, which makes me think they're trying to take something. This could be maybe just the stolen treasure of Hachinosu, which may just be those devil fruits that we saw, or it might be something else that they know is necessary to complete their journey. Because I'm sure Rox was also trying to find Laugh Tale by this point, and if Roger knew that the Poneglyphs needed to be translated to find that place, he probably wouldn't come after Rox like this unless it was going to help him reach that goal right? He already sailed the whole Grand Line and started searching for the Poneglyphs. So if he's picking fights with the top tiers, I think it's gotta be for a Poneglyph related reason. It's sort of like when Roger fought Whitebeard. Yeah, they were buddies and everything and they 
weren't seriously trying to kill each other, but after they fought, Roger asked for Odin, because without him on the crew, he couldn't finish his journey. He had no other way to read the Poneglyphs. So I think that Roger may have went after Rox for a very similar reason, because Rox may have had something that Roger needed to find Laugh Tale, something that Rox probably found on Lodestar before Roger and took for himself. Now this could be as simple as just one road Poneglyph, potentially the one that ended up with Big Mom afterward, since that would basically stop Roger from ever finding Laugh Tale, even if he found the other three, right? He's kind of creating a bottleneck there, and we don't really know where Big Mom got that Poneglyph originally. But I think it might be something even better than that, like something that actually helps people translate the Poneglyphs, because that would actually enable Roger or Rox to finish the journey. And if Rox was the only one with something like this, that would explain why Roger felt some type of way over the last year. And it really shouldn't be a huge surprise that Rox would be involved in deciphering Poneglyphs for a number of reasons. For one, he was said to be involved in the worst taboos of the world, which from the government's perspective is usually about figuring out the true history. Second, the guy goes by the name Rox, and his crew was called the Rox Pirates, and obviously the Poneglyphs are giant rocks. I mean, he should be going by Zebek, since Rox is his family name, but even Sengoku called this guy Rox. Don't put something like this past Oda. And third, we know that Zebek and Blackbeard share some kind of connection, and Oda said that in real life, Teach would be an archaeologist. What if Zebek was the very same way? What if he managed to translate the Poneglyphs himself at some point using what he found at Lodestar. I mean, if you go back to Roger getting Odin on his crew in the first place, he was super desperate. He even bowed his head, and I think that has to be because he exhausted every other option he could think of, meaning that he had no choice. Meaning that the Ohara scholars probably weren't an option yet either. You would imagine that if they knew how to translate it by that point, they would have helped someone good like Roger who was also trying to uncover the true history. And on the other side, you would also have to imagine that Roger would have definitely made an attempt at seeking them out, right? I mean, Roger sailed around the world multiple times, became friendly with most countries that he met, and clearly was taking any and all opportunities he could to translate those stones. So if he ever went and asked Clover for help, he'd probably have just joined the dang crew. We already saw that Clover was basically a pirate, and with Roger, he'd have a chance to learn everything that he ever wanted. I mean, we even saw that late in Roger's journey, he went and got Crocus to help him with the disease that he had contracted. So going and getting Clover, this old guy who could translate the Poneglyphs, would have made a lot of sense for him. And even in chapter 1120, which came out just before I posted this video, so I had to come back and include it because now there's even more evidence for it, we see Clover going to Vegapunk on Punk Hazard and asking for help in his research. And this occurred 26 years ago, the very same year that Roger asked Odin to join the crew. Sure, research can mean a lot of different things here, but this at least hints to us that Clover did not have the language figured out by this point, thus why Roger had to go get Odin instead. It's kind of sad when you think about it, because Clover may have missed his chance to learn the whole history by just a year or two even though he worked his whole life for it. Honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if Clover had met with Roger over the last so many years and tried to help him all he could, but unfortunately, the timing of this all just didn't work out. And yes, Roger could have technically gone back to Ohara after Laugh Tale and told him, but for one, the world government was kind of tracking Roger everywhere, as we saw when they were looking for Ace as a baby, so it would have been kind of a big risk for him to go there since they already had a target on their back. And also, after he learned all the truths of the world, he probably knew that Clover would figure it out on his own anyway. But I do wonder if this discussion between Clover and Vegapunk then drove Vegapunk to talk to Roger later on, or at least he surmised the points he then made at the end of the chapter because of this. So if Clover didn't have the language figured out 26 years ago, it then raises the question about the timeline and methodology of how they discovered the language. Because Roger found Laugh Tale 25 years ago, and the Buster Call that tried to erase Ohara was 22 years ago, meaning that it was likely sometime in that time frame where the language was actually deciphered. Which it kind of makes sense that Ohara didn't last that long after figuring it out, because the government tends to retaliate pretty quickly and strongly when they realize people are learning about the past, even as we've recently seen in Egghead. And on top of all that, we also know that Nico Olvia and six others went out to sea 28 years ago to finish her supposedly late husband's work of studying the Poneglyphs. And we also know that Clover was out there getting in trouble for decades trying to figure this stuff out.
out. So there was a lot of work that led up to this point, so what was the key that they found that finally let them crack the code? I mean, we were basically told that it was just from all of their studies, but I doubt the story's just gonna end there. I mean, figuring out the ancient language is a massive deal, and even in real life, we had an example of this with the hieroglyphs from ancient Egypt, which are already a massive parallel to the Poneglyphs, since they're both based on ancient symbols that are etched into steles or steles, however you pronounce it, and the first one that we ever found in the story was an alabasta, which is a parallel for ancient Egypt. But we couldn't figure out how to read the hieroglyphs until we found the Rosetta Stone, which featured the same message in three different languages, Demotic, Hieroglyphic, and Greek. Since people could still read and write in Greek, they could then compare the messages in all the different languages and figure out what some of those symbols mean. Thus, we could finally understand how to read and write hieroglyphs. And I bet you that O'Hara found something just like this, but not until after Rox found it at Lodestar first. Meaning that the Rosetta Stone for the ancient language is probably the thing that Roger wanted from him. And just generally speaking, it's kind of a no-brainer to me that something like this would exist in One Piece, because from the Ancient Kingdom's perspective, it would be pretty smart to leave behind a way to translate the stones if you're also gonna leave behind the stones in the first place. And you also might as well do that where they initially find out about the Poneglyphs as well. And like I said earlier, the only way that a rando is gonna learn about the road Poneglyphs from Lodestar is if there's a message in the vernacular since they can't read the ancient language yet. There's gotta be either something written on a stone or a tone dial or whatever. So just like the real Rosetta Stone, there was probably two messages adjacent to one another on Lodestar. One that anyone could read, and then that very same message was written in the ancient language next to it, thus allowing people to compare and learn the language for themselves. But I think that Rox may have taken part of this stone, or just one of the entire stones in general, as a means to keep his pirate enemies from figuring it out. At least until he died, of course, right? Where I think it then later somehow ended up with the O'Hara scholars, thus how they figured it out. And crazily enough, we actually might have some evidence for this thing existing. Because I presented this Rosetta Stone theory over to my Discord, and user Elia said that some genius had shown them this image a while ago, where we clearly have a Rosetta Stone-shaped thing on full display in the main room in the Tree of Knowledge. And you can even see a line running across near the top, just like on the real Rosetta Stone where there's breaks in between the different languages. And every Poneglyph that we've seen before was just a cube, and they're also said to be indestructible. So the fact that O'Hara had one that was broken off in some way is a massive clue in my opinion. It's probably different than a typical Poneglyph, but obviously if it's in the center room of O'Hara, then you really can't discount it. So I think what we're looking at is the piece that Rock stole all those years ago. Even on the real Rosetta Stone, we know that it was a part of a bigger stele. And so that paves the way for a parallel where Rox took a key piece of a bigger stone to then decipher the language, and that's what we're looking at here. Which could then mean that Rox D. Zebek had a hand in what O'Hara eventually became. I mean, like I said earlier, Rox broke many of the world's taboos, and I think it would line up pretty well if he not only knew the ancient language, but was also responsible for other people learning it. So even though it made Roger angry and kept him from finding the One Piece sooner, it eventually paved the way for Robin, the one who will reveal the ancient history to the world to learn what she needed to learn. Because if they didn't have that there at O'Hara, she would not have learned till at least they got all the way to Lodestar. Meaning that this entire time, throughout Luffy's entire journey, he wouldn't have had someone with him that could read the Poneglyphs along the way. That helped so much because they've run into a bunch of Poneglyphs and Robin's been able to pick up pieces of information as they go along. I mean, even if Luffy could have eventually recruited Sukiyaki or maybe Momo after Sukiyaki taught him the language, they'd still have to go all the way back and retrace all their steps to go read all the Poneglyphs that they already did. But thanks to O'Hara and maybe this Rosetta Stone thing, Luffy got to skip all those steps, which fits right in line with Luffy getting a lot of help along his journey to make it easier than Roger's was. And it also makes me wonder if this could all tie to Robin's dad. Now, I doubt that Rox is her dad because she's 30 and he died 38 years ago, so it's almost impossible, unless you know he's alive somehow. And I also did a video about why Crocodile is going to be Rox's child, who ties very closely to Robin, by the way, thanks to Baroque Works. But maybe Rox's brother is her dad or something. Or maybe Rox had a Robin-esque person on their crew who was tasked with learning this language, and that's Robin's dad. Maybe he wanted to live out his captain's dream after he died, which was learning and sharing the language.
language of the world. I mean, going back to chapter 1120 one more time, we learned that Clover had a big brother who passed away just because he carried the initial D, and that Clover also carries the initial D. So what if that person was Robin's dad and also the liaison between Rox and O'Hara? I mean, we don't really know how old Clover or his brother were at that point, but I mean, would anyone be shocked if Robin was actually a member of the D clan this whole time, but maybe she took her mom's family name instead just to avoid the added scrutiny? I mean, of all the current non-D clan members in One Piece, Robin might be the most obvious one to eventually become a D since her goal is actually to reveal this history to the world. So I wouldn't be that shocked if Clover's brother or someone like that from the past in O'Hara was her dad and thus leading to the point that we're at today. Either way though, this paints Lodestar out to be an extremely, extremely important place, right? Like I said at the beginning, it seems almost unnecessary since we already know the key information from this island. But if this was truly where the Ancient Kingdom left a Rosetta Stone type thing, then this gives a perfect opportunity for Robin to shine since she can actually understand it already. She might realize that the missing chunk on Lodestar is the same shape as what she had on O'Hara, which is going to connect so many dots throughout the world about how things really happened. And she might also feel like it's now her responsibility to fill that message back in so that others can also decipher that language. A big reason why she wants to uncover history is because it's important to share it with other people. She's not trying to monopolize that in any way, shape, or form. So even though Rox did, and it kind of helped her in a roundabout way, she would probably want to make up for that as well. I mean, we saw in Skypea how angry she got at Yama for destroying those ruins, because they hold so much history, so I don't see her being very happy about one of the most important ruins at Lodestar being damaged. Now, I'm not sure how she would actually repair that stone, but it would be kind of cool if this is how we learned how Poneglyphs were made, because maybe she has to make one or something. Now, we know that originally they were made in Wano during the Void Century, but we don't really know why they're so indestructible, right? And this could provide a chance for us to finally learn that. And I mean, remember in Skypea when Odin etched some of Roger's words in the ancient language into the gold on the bell? Maybe it's time for Robin to do something similar to Luffy. Like, Luffy's gonna leave a little message behind on this new Poneglyph or whatever that they're making. And then the very last thing that I want to touch on in regards to Lodestar is actually Eustace Kid, because I'm a very firm believer that that man has already been to Lodestar. And the main reason why is that he already knows about the road Poneglyphs, yet he didn't have the same luxury as Luffy and Law where they learned it from Inurashi. He had to find out another way somehow, right? And I think it was the old-fashioned way, because he also has the magnet magnet fruit, and log poses guide you based on island's magnetic poles. So Kid is basically a living log pose, and I wonder if he just detected Lodestar's magnetic pole from the very beginning and went straight there. Because he's always been quote-unquote ahead of Luffy, right? Like he had a higher bounty at Sabaody, he went and attacked several Yonko first, even though he got his ass kicked, and he even knows about the man marked by flames now while Luffy doesn't. So I think it just kind of lines up for him to have also beaten Luffy to Lodestar, which could maybe be a fun parallel to Rox beating Roger to Lodestar. Not that Kid is on Rock's level, or even close, but if someone beat Roger, I think it would just make a lot of sense for someone to beat Luffy there as well. Now, I'm not exactly sure what Oda is going to do with that, like I don't know if Kid is going to be at Lodestar for some reason, especially since Kid is currently sinking to the bottom of the ocean, but if Lodestar is the final stop among all the magnetism nonsense in One Piece, then I think there's a good chance that Kid just has to be involved in some way. Like, maybe he messes with Lodestar's magnetic pole so nobody can find it, or maybe even while on Elbaf he can make it so the log poses take way longer to update, thus making it a lot harder to find Lodestar. I'm not really sure, but if you want to hear more ideas about how some of these endgame events in One Piece are going to go down, then definitely head over to my second channel, Redacted, where Coach King Recon and I broke down everything from this recent SBS, to what islands we still have left in the story, to who the true final villains are, and all sorts of different final saga theories, so hope to see you guys over there.